Hey, what's going on guys? Ben Brewster here at TrailAthletics.com. This video is about the walking windup. So first let's cover the purpose of the walking windup and then we're gonna go ahead and talk about exactly how to do the drill and some common mistakes with the drill. So the main purpose is to give you kind of this final step, this most sports specific step at the tail end of your drill work before you get into your actual catch play, bullpens, what have you with a baseball for the day. So we're taking all the, the backwards chaining work that we've done, the upper half work, the torso rotation work, the pelvic rotation work, all these drills, and we're now trying to tie it together in the most sports specific pattern possible. So essentially we're just doing a wind up, we're just adding momentum from behind. So we're adding just a touch more momentum to help you feel more dynamic, more athletic. And this is especially helpful for guys that feel a little bit flat footed out of the delivery. They feel like they've lost some athleticism. This really helps to reinforce and cue that and then take that into your actual throwing for the day. The other way that the walking windup can be helpful is to find that sweet spot for how much drift you actually get during your forward move. In other words, if you overdo it on the walking windup, you're going to find yourself falling forwards during the leg lift and losing that back leg. And if you don't get enough momentum, you're going to find yourself stuck and stalling over the rubber as you move forward. So the walking windup really does force you to be athletic and find that sweet spot for how much of a forward move you actually should have while still being able to stay connected with the backside. So as far as how to actually do the walking windup, think of it as just throwing out of your windup, but with an extra step coming in from behind. Now we can talk about coming in from the side for certain athletes. But the main point is that you want to have a controlled gather of this momentum. It's really just adding that 5% additional forward motion uh, than you would get out of your normal delivery. You'll see that he's taking that time to gather his center of mass, to stay tall, stay stacked, and he's doing his best to close off the pelvis, ride that hinge, ride that back leg forward as far as he can, and then let the rest of the throw smoothly unfold. Trying to stay loose, trying to stay free and easy with the arm, and trying to let that energy from the pelvis work its way up into the upper half. So a common mistake that you'll see, guys will rush through this drill is they'll get too much momentum coming into it. And so you'll see that he never actually gets that gap. He never actually goes into his full leg lift. He just kind of rushes through and loses contact with that back foot. So this is one way to maybe get a higher number on the radar gun, but it doesn't actually mean that you're going to be throwing harder when you take this to the mound. So the whole point of all these drills is to tie it together with a nice bow and say this is the most sports specific pattern and be able to take that and transfer it to your actual delivery. So when you start to kind of cheat the drill for the sake of just getting a slightly higher number on the radar gun, uh, that kind of defeats the purpose. So full leg lift, the same height, same tempo that you would have in your actual delivery and really try to stay true to your actual patterns just again adding in that slight momentum from that step into. So for athletes who have a little bit more coil with their leg lift they, they really kind of counter rotate the pelvis during the leg lift it can be a lot to come in from behind because you then have to turn almost 180 degrees and it's, it's a lot of moving parts. So for certain athletes, it can be more comfortable to come in from a 45 degree angle. It can make it easier to actually close off the pelvis. That's something you can play with. That's something you can decide, hey, what feels a little bit more comfortable? What's more repeatable? What feels more stable on that back leg? and also what actually gives you better numbers on the radar gun uh, when you are radar gunning your plyo drill. So there's a number of different factors. There's no right or wrong answer for this, but I would encourage you to kind of play with these different variations and just see what's most comfortable and what transfers best to your actual delivery. So what about for guys who don't actually throw out of the windup in game? Is this something that they should still do? Uh, my answer would be yes. Now, not every one of our athletes actually ends up keeping the walking windups in their program, but we do try it out for most guys. Uh, point being, even if you throw out of the stretch primarily in games, and even if that's what's most comfortable, you can still benefit from doing a walk and wind up. It's really about rhythm, tempo, and kind of connecting and smoothing everything out. So even for guys who don't end up using it in game, a lot of times they will comment that they feel like they're a lot less flat footed and they can still kind of transfer a lot of the momentum and the feeling from this and the weight shift and getting that kind of that sweet spot for their drift. They feel like they can still transfer that when they then get into throwing out of their delivery from the stretch. So I would encourage you to try, try this even if you aren't a wind up guy, just using it in your training as kind of that final drill piece before you get into your stretch. So a final variable that you can play with and that you can tweak about this drill is starting with the hands over the head. So kind of doing that old school wind up as you go through the drill. Again, we've covered that this isn't necessarily gonna be exactly how you pitch in a game. We're just trying to gain rhythm, fluidity, and athleticism. So this is a really good way to do that. For a lot of our guys, they actually will see a slight uptick in velo as soon as they play with this. We actually see the hands over the head cue as kind of a bridge between the upper and the lower half. So it's almost a way for guys who struggle to connect what their upper half is doing to what their lower half is doing to connect the two top to bottom. Because now as you're lifting your leg, your, your upper half is doing something, your arms are doing something, and there's a much more seamless fluid connection and flow of energy through the upper half, even as the lower half is going. So we will use that as kind of another way to play with the walk and wind up. I encourage you to test it, see how it feels, and then reinforce that feeling with some objective numbers from a radar gun. Again, you don't have to be throwing max effort to get some radar numbers. We talked about split testing, different mechanical variants before, but again, just throw five, 10, one way, five, 10, another way, and just kind of see, again, where are 
those numbers. And it really is a kind of an intelligent tinkering model, intelligent trial and error model, just to see you know what gives you the best results, what works the best, what feels the best, and then ultimately this is about transferring it to your delivery. So that is the walking wind up. Those are some of the variables that we tweak and that we play with. Go ahead, comment down below if you have any questions, and we'll see you in the next video.